Hello everyone, for first updates now, I'm Tyler Olds and you're watching Behind the Bumpers. It's fun show we dive deeper into FRC robots, what makes them work and showing off some really cool things here today. And today I'm here with team number 2992, the SS Prometheus from Mandeville, Louisiana. 2992 won their division skills challenge uh, this year, has also won the concept award uh, for the game design challenge as well in uh, 2021. This team dates back to 2009, uh, but they really started to hit their stride in 2017 with a division finalist appearance and would go on to repeat this as division finals in 2019, along with a regional win at the Arkansas Regional. In 2020, they also had a chance to compete at the Arkansas Regional, where they were the first pick of the number two alliance and semifinalists. So we're going to be checking out their 2021 robot, uh, which is one that's on 2020 in the background, showing off some comparisons. And today to help me out with that, I have CJ, Logan, Hello. and Matthew. And we're going to be diving into what makes this robot uh, unique this year, some changes from 2020, all this and more coming up on Behind the Bumpers. Giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting fun so we can continue to make content for you. Stryker makes some of the most revolutionary medical equipment and is a big supporter of FIRST and its participants. If you are looking for an internship or a career that supports you being in FIRST, check out careers.stryker.com to learn more. If your team or organization is hosting an off-season event, did you know you can stream it right here on First Updates Now for free? Events that stream on First Updates Now receive an additional 25 to 100% additional viewership because we help you promote your event on a large platform. If you're interested, reach out to us on any of our social platforms, on Discord, or send us an email at admin at firstupdatesnow.com. Let's get your off-season event streaming on First Updates Now. Hurry, dates are booking fast, and we take first come, first serve for all our events. So CJ, start us off on this robot here. Once again, this is your 2021 robot. Uh, so nice wide intake. And we're also gonna be talking about your spin dexer. And I'd love to hear about uh, lessons learned from the 2020 season, how you implemented them on this robot. So talk to me a little bit more about these two mechanisms. So one thing that we really went from last year to this year is the pivot point. So we have a four bar system on the 2021 robot here versus last year, it was a single pivot point pushed up by a piston. And what we learned was that really helped with stability of the rope of the intake, because last year we had a lot of issues with it bending and twisting versus this year we had no issues with it at all. It stayed sturdy. So that helped a lot with intaking. Uh, the next biggest thing is we have almost like a double stacked four bar system on either side, which also helps that sturdiness of it. And then all polycarb quarter inch. And we learned a lot from last year to this year of making that. The other things that we implemented are we have these long churros across so that our intake is more protected when we run into, if we accidentally run into the shooter or whatever, the goal, we actually have protection on our intake. So it's not just going to be completely destroyed. So is that intake we, frame there, is that actually sturdy or is it, does it have a little bit of flex to it? Um, you, can you just wobble that around just so we can see that? Absolutely. So it has a little bit of flex to it, but not much compared to last year where it can almost been. Oh, wow. Like, so this is a lot more sturdy than last year's. So that's interesting on that is that, so we've actually, an interesting thing I've seen actually from teams from 2020 into 2021 is they've actually kind of gone the opposite way sometimes where they did much more of a flexible frame. So what have you seen from this sturdy frame? Like, have you actually tried to run into like a wall before and you've seen a difference on that? Um, we've accidentally run into walls a few <laughs> times. Sure. And it has held up pretty well. We've not broken any intake parts yet, thankfully. Um, one thing we noticed last year, though, playing competition with the 2021 bot is that flex tend to got us stuck in our intake and we weren't able to intake really for the rest of the match. So that caused us a lot of issues. So we went with a more sturdy design this year to keep it from flexing and preventing us from intaking. So next we'll be going into your spin dexter. So CJ, talk to me a little bit more about some of the concept and design of it. Um, so you got the tube in the middle and then uh, really interested on like the rollers on the outside. And then if you have dividers or if you want the fully uh, open concept and how that's been working out for you. So this year, last year we had an indexer, which didn't really work for us. That's why we went to a spin dexter this year. And it's an open spin dexter, no dividers between them. Cause we found out what happens is when we had the divider during our prototyping, the balls tend to get stuck on those dividers a lot of times and get stuck between them 
And so we went with an open design instead because that prevented them from getting stuck and we had a lot less jamming issues. Um, the rollers on the sides, we went with that because there's actually, they're kind of free uh, spinning on just little plastic caps or whatever. And the reason why that, because it kind of helped the ball rotate around instead of being stuck up on something that's solid, what will happen is those rollers will just kind of smoothly roll along with it. Um, the tube in the center is to prevent balls from getting stuck in the center, basically. And it spins with the spin dexter, so there's no resistance on it. It was it's with a little 3D printed part, and it's got a PVC pipe. And then the actual bearing of this, so we left a lot of space underneath for future stuff with the climb. So what we did with the bearing is we almost have like a polycarb turret with it. And there's 10 bolts all the way around that have bearing stacks on them that roll around this CNC polycard piece in, in the center. So it's kind of open so that we can see it. It's, and then to spin it, the actual mechanism is the giant CNC uh, spur gear, basically, that we custom made ourselves. And it goes all the way around the spin dexter. It's 110 teeth. And it's connected to a 22 tooth. Uh, gear currently on a motor. Uh, so Logan, I know you're going to be talking about uh, the shooter uh, a little bit and talking about drive train. So talk to me about how those power cells are getting into the shooter uh, itself. Uh, and then uh, something really interesting, when I first looked at this, I was like, oh, they must have a turret. Uh, but you actually don't. It's angled at a 45 degree angle there. So very interested to hear about, uh, you know, your uh, thought process behind that and, and how that works on your robot. Yeah. So our uh, leading into what we call like the ejector system of the robot is so we have the, there's built onto the same plate that we made the, the shooter out of. Um, there's kind of like this ejection um, ramps so that the balls are able to, to slide up and go into the shooter. So there's two, omni, or two sets of omni wheels, two omni wheels per, per axle. And as these rotate, it, we intake in a clockwise direction. And so these are actually paired with the spindexer and it's able to to feed at the same ratio and keep the balls moving around in, in this way. And then as soon as we're ready to shoot, they spin in the opposite way, so does the spindexer, and it's able to pull the ball up into the ramp for the shooter, and then it takes from the flywheel. So moving to the shooter, this second uh, axle for the omni wheel takes it from this path and pulls it up out of the spindexer. Um, we're, we decided to go with a, uh, a 45 knot, necessarily for one particular reason, but it, was, it actually helped us out for packaging. We are able to push the shooter out into this, this corner of the ramp, or the corner of the robot, and it kind of worked out a little bit for, our, for the geometry of our, our whole robot. Um, plus, being a swerve drive, where it didn't really, wasn't too much of a, a, a hassle that we're, we shoot off the side of our robot at a 45 degree angle. So um, we thought that it was kind of an interesting design, so we went that way. Um, then, so as it, as the, the ball comes up through the, the, the Omni wheel, it gets caught by what we have a, um, we have a pre-feed wheel, which is a acceleration wheel. It's half the diameter of the, of the main flywheel. So we have a flywheel shooter and that allows us to get the ball accelerating to get a little bit higher accuracy on the shooter. And they're, uh, belted together from GT2 belts. And they're spinning at exactly the same speed, but just because of what the pre-feed wheel is the um, half the diameter of the main uh, flywheel. We have a four-inch flywheel and a two-inch pre-feed wheel. We can get that acceleration that we need. Uh, talk to me a little bit more about your uh, adjustable hood that you have uh, for it, and then I know we're going to be going a little bit more into uh, your drivetrain as well. Yeah. So we this year, as opposed to last year, we have an adjustable hood. We thought this was really important for that home challenge where we have to shoot at set distances along in the field and have and still maintain really high accuracy. So we went with a rack and pinion, well, kind of a rack and a, a gear segment, but a rack and pinion nonetheless, uh, adjustable sh hood. So we have controlled by a Neo 550 down here at the bottom and it's belted up to these two gears and it uses a 3D printed rack along and follows along with the whole hood. And all of this is CNC out of aluminum, so it's super strong. And um, along in the actual 
back port, we have 16th inch uh, polycarb. So we bent that to still ma have the, the same form and still keep that hood at the, the right angle. So as we go into your uh, drive train here, you guys are using a, a SWIR drive in. Uh, one of the things to mention is you, you've done a little bit of modifications uh, to it as well, too. So I'd love to hear, you know, a, a lot of teams we're seeing going swerve with the at-home challenges. Uh, so I'd love to hear about uh, how you modify that swerve to suit your needs and what SWIR uh, drive modules you're using. Yep. So we're this year we're running the Mark II Swerve Drive Specialties Swerve Drive. We ordered this a while back, and due to the pandemic, they didn't come in right when we when we needed them. But when we did get them, we tested around with the, the stock Neo config configuration, and we noticed um, a little bit of, we wanted a little bit higher power on the drive specifically. So we're still running the Neo on the, the turning for the modules, but we upgraded to the Falcons for drive. So we got four Falcons for the four Swerve modules on our drive. And that way we're able to drive super quick, be really agile around on the field, and still get the, um, a really high scoring on the power port challenge for that home challenge. Well, let's wrap up with uh, Matthew here. He's going to be talking about uh, some of the code and programming uh, on your robot as well, too, and a couple of things to highlight that we can show. Uh, so love to hear uh, more about uh, what you're utilizing and how we can show that off. Yeah, so this year, our big thing, we switched to Swerve, so we spent a lot of time uh, learning and implementing the Swerve code and the Autonomous for that, which we run uh, motion trajectories uh, along with some custom code that we added to enable us to set rotations and the, uh, since it's where we can be moving at uh, our path at any rotation we want angle. Um, and then our next big thing is we have for vision processing, we're using a limelight, which allows us to accurately aim at the goal and uh, shoot our power cells. If I can ask I you for your limelight, are you just using it to, for alignment or do you also like gauge like distance and stuff off of that as well? Like is it actually adjusting your hood? Uh, so right now we're just using it for alignment, but for uh, comp off-season competitions, we're working on automatically setting the uh, hood position and shooter speed. Well, 2992, thanks again for taking the time to tell us about your 2021 robot. Uh, looks like your uh, modifications from this year are really paying off. Uh, so looking forward to big things uh, from your team in the future, you're really starting to rise up uh, in your area. So can't wait to see what your team produces. Thanks for taking the time. Thank, Thank you. you. We would like to thank our friends at Stryker for supporting this video. Stryker is looking for current and future FIRST alumni to join their internship program and FIRST mentors who are looking for a great career with a company who actually supports their FIRST journey. Go to careers.stryker.com to learn more. You can also directly support FUN by joining FUN Nation. Click the Join button and just for a few bucks a month, you'll unlock special perks and directly support us so we can keep making great content. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.